uh, Madam Secretary. Let's uh, bring up 1395. This is for a um, comment and a vote. Um, and, 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 and Councilman Cashman, please put, put this on the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that uh, Resolution 1395 be adopted. Madam Secretary. Oh, okay. The, according to 3.2.6 of the Rules of Procedure. Okay. So, uh, um, no vote is required. Why don't, why don't you, why don't you hold your, hold your uh, movement. Councilman Espinosa, why don't you go ahead and make a comment? Yeah, I, yeah consistent with 3.2.6, I'd like to postpone this to the next regularly scheduled meeting. In light of the comments that we heard, uh, you know, particularly right before this meeting, I think there is an appetite for a, a public comment as well. So I'll, I'll leave that up to, you know, your discretion on whether we do that or not. But I do think that I would still like to exercise my right to postpone this to the next regularly scheduled meeting. Thanks. Okay. Uh, in accordance with our rules, it is postponed. We do not need a vote for that. Councilwoman Ortega. So um, I was going to ask for some information. Um, so between now and next week when it comes back, I would like to get information on where we are in the spend of the overall flat to Park Hill Twin Basin drainage project. Not asking for that right at this moment, but would like to get the big picture on where we are with our full spend. Are we anticipating we are on budget? Do we um, think that we will be over budget? I know these are all broken out into different projects. We've got the Global Landing Outfall, the 39th Avenue Channel. We have the Park Hill Golf Course and the City Park Golf Course, which were all brought forward as one big project. They've all been separated out, but I think it's important to know that with the wastewater fees that is the primary funding source, whether we're on budget or anticipate, and I know some of the construction hasn't started yet, but um, it would be helpful to know where we are in that big picture. Yep. So, and looking for that as well as information on who the MBWB is. I saw that we've got a 23% goal, but would like to know who the contractor is. So, thank you. If and you it, could have somebody get back to me, that would be great. It looks like um, everyone on the team is nodding. A lot of team members here working on this. Um, and I would also like to bring up uh, you all. We, we kind of talked about this in committee, just the standards. Um, th this is the, this, especially when it comes to 39th Avenue Greenway, it's the closest to any residential. We had some folks uh, in the cold neighborhood talking about how close this is to their homes and, <clears throat> and that the protections and the standards that we will up in this location from any other location. I know we talked about there's some fencing there's some you know mitigation around the dirt that we're going to be doing there's some air monitor monitoring we're going to be doing so I mean folks are really concerned about the contamination in the ground and so if we can uh, just have all that ready that'd be great all right oh, Councilman Espinosa. yeah I, the reason why I was hesitant is I didn't uh, run it by, I didn't check the calendar on, on what we have for, for January 2nd and both January 2nd and January 8th fall within the time frame to act. But I would like to request a, a public comment and if for some reason the second is, is too congested, maybe one of my colleagues would offer up a, another postponement to the 8th. But between either the 2nd or the 8th, have a public comment if it's possible. Okay, well, so you, you know, at some point, at some point, we get, we start to back up on on onto the uh, thirty day shot clock, and I don't think we can only have more than one. But, <laughs> Councilwoman Ortega, are you up on this? Well, I asked my questions, but I think what's important is to um, okay, so do the action tonight rather than think that we're going to deal with it when it comes back next week. So we should determine if this if it's the second or the eighth is when it should come back with that public comment. Okay. Uh, Maybe Councilman just, Herndon? Mr. Mr. President, you can only postpone it one time. Yeah. So it would have to be on the second. You can't postpone it again to the eighth. Yeah. I just, 
just point right. out the correction. I thought we had that provision where another council member, but sure, um, I would like to recommend. You could time. You could also postpone it. Okay. Well, come on. We've we got to keep moving. Now. I would like to request a public comment on uh, January 2nd. Okay. Um, and, and, and Madam Secretary, do you have, have the uh, schedule for January 2nd? There's one required public hearing, and it's my understanding, another courtesy public hearing on January 2nd that will be offered by Councilman Flynn in okay. a few minutes. Okay. So it looks like we'll have this action on uh, January 2nd. So, yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's move on to 1396. And... Um, Councilman Flynn, I want you to put this on the floor as well. I'm sorry, Councilman Cashman, please put this on the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that uh, uh, Council Bill 1396 uh, be ordered published. All right. It has been moved and seconded. Councilman Flynn, your comments. Uh, several, Mr. President, thank you. First of all, uh, as we discussed at committee, I wanted to request a one-hour courtesy hearing on this uh, council bill, which is the land acquisition ordinance uh, related to the Platte to Park Hill project in the Park Hill golf course. And uh, seeing as how it's related to uh, 1395, uh, I don't know what your, as president, I don't know what your uh, direction might be or what your decision might be, but it might be possible to do them combined and have, allow people to, since they're related projects, uh, to entertain comments on both of them. I think that's an excellent su suggestion. That's why I made it. <laughs> oh. Make only excellent suggestions. <laughs> calm down, calm down, Councilman Slay. I know, you hear the I know this is the last. This is the last one of seventeen. Count, uh, Madam Secretary, uh, will you will you please put these uh, together um, for one combined public hearing? Yes, Mr. President. All right. And uh, Councilman Flynn, do you want to offer an amendment? Yes, uh, in relation to the land acquisition ordinance, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to propose an amendment, and, and some of you might not think this is the most excellent suggestion, but I hope that you uh, duly consider it. Uh, in reading the draft of the ordinance, it's, it struck me as so being somewhat different than the impressions that we got out of Finance Committee in that um, several uh, weeks back, a month or more ago, the administration gave up on the, on the notion of acquiring uh, the Park Hill Golf Course, 75 acres, and then lease purchase the remaining 75 because of some complications and many complicated issues that arose because of the ownership and the conservation easement and just so many questions with the concessionaire that runs the golf course. So the administration decided to, uh, to procure the property needed for the drainage project through uh, a system of permanent easements where the uh, drain, where the uh, the detention would be, and then temporary construction easements of up to 90 acres. And, uh, and that passed unanimously out of the committee. And when I read the draft ordinance, it contains a, a, a language that's pretty boilerplate and probably necessary, but I think needs to be clarified. And that is that if the administration is not going to acquire in fee simple title uh, the actual full ownership rights of the golf course, only the easements, the, uh, the ordinance as it's written gives the administration the authority nevertheless to go ahead and acquire at least up to 90 acres in fee title, which is not what we intend and not what the administration intends to be frank, uh, but in the interest of transparency and in the interest of, of uh, being very, very open and transparent about what is a truly probably one of the more controversial projects going on in our city right now, I think, we should, I, think I would like to offer this amendment uh, that clarifies that any acquisition of fee interest, fee title interest, is only for those portions that, are, that come up in relation to the acquisition of the easements and not the full 90 acres. And so I, if you would entertain the motion now, I'd like to make it and put it on the floor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I move to amend Council Bill 17-1396 in the following particulars. On page 2, line 40, insert the following new sentence. Notwithstanding the foregoing, City Council does not hereby authorize the mayor or his duly appointed representatives to acquire the entire property in fee simple title from any third party, not including interests currently owned by the city, provided that authority is hereby given to acquire lesser portions of the property in fee simple title as may be necessary or desirable to, to provide for the project. 
Thank you. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Now comments uh, by members of council on the amendment. Councilman Sussman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to have somebody from the administration come and speak to this because it's the first that I've heard of it, and so I'm not I'm not sure whether what uh, effects this might have on the ability to go forward with this project. Are you, and Councilman Sussman, are you asking for the legal team uh, that's working around this? Uh, sure, that would okay. be great. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Councilwoman. I'm John McGrath with the City Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. So this request came up um, recently and um, is um, something that is not typical in a land acquisition ordinance to be um, seeking to acquire rights lesser than fee title. Um, it is correct that we currently anticipate a need for permanent and temporary easements on the property, but this is um, this particular piece of property has a fairly complicated history and ownership structure. Um, and so we felt that it was the prudent course to include kind of a full slate of potential acquisition interests to protect the city uh, because as we currently sit here today, we don't know the particular boundaries of the property we may be acquiring. We, we have committed to it being less than 90 acres in total. It could be significantly less. Um, we have not designed the project beyond just a very preliminary design, and we have not done an appraisal of the property. So there are a lot of unknowns. We also have not examined title to the property. So we don't know here today what we might encounter when uh, this process unfolds. And so it would be our preference, and what is included in the original draft of the agreement was fee title and any lesser interest which is very typical for a land acquisition ordinance in the city. So that's the reason it was drafted that way. And again, I, I agree with Councilman Flynn that sitting here today, we anticipate it being interest in the nature of an easement, permanent and temporary, but we don't want to um, impose that limitation on ourselves only to find six or seven months from now that we don't have all of the rights we need to be able to deliver the site to our design build team and have to go back to council for additional rights, that could introduce <coughs> the risk of uh, delay and potential damages to the city if, if uh, it unfolds in that way. Damages in what way? You mean liability damages? Uh, damages for uh, delay under our contract with SEMA, um, and there are other potential damages for um, CDOT is expecting us to deliver uh, pieces of this infrastructure at certain times, and so the city has made commitments there to deliver this program um, according to that schedule. So this kind of amendment it, you've never seen before when you're trying to do this sort of acquisition? Is this an un unusual amendment um, that is being asked for? It's my opinion that this would be an unusual amendment. To, a, a, to an our regular process. Uh -huh. An unusual limitation on the scope of rights that we would typically seek to, to have as we go into the process of negotiating for an acquisition. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I think I have only heard about this as I was walking to my chair this evening, and I think it bears a lot more uh, discussion and thought um, by the co a committee or s someone before I would be able to vote on this, so thank you. Thank you, Councilman Assessment. Uh, Councilman Cashman? Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, sir. Um, so if we end up with the fee simple option, we then take ownership of that land. Um, when we're done with the project uh, for the, uh, to create the, uh, the drainage element, what happens to the title to that land? Does it would then stay with the city? Because as I understand it, we need to return the course to a regulation 18 hole golf course to protect the conservation easement, correct? Correct, and so okay. the answer to your question depends on what type of interest we acquire. If we acquire as anticipated easements, then um, 
the remaining interest would remain with Clayton. And if it was a temporary easement after the duration of our temporary easement expires, full title would revert to Clayton. As to the permanent easement, we would have permanent rights there and Clayton would retain the underlying rights. But what happens to the conservation easement? Unless something else happens to impact the conservation easement, which is currently actually incorporated into the agency agreement. But assuming um, nothing changes um, from the status quo today, the agency agreement and the use restrictions would continue in place throughout the project, regardless of whether we took fee title or some lesser interest. So the intention remains to return the golf course to playable condition, which is what's needed to pr protect that easement. Is that correct? Correct. Don't want to get too far into the weeds, but is there any scenario by which we lose control over the conservation easement if we, in, in what you're talking about? We believe not. Um, it will depend on our ability to return the golf course to a playable 18-hole golf course. And we've uh, taken steps throughout the process to ensure that we have that ability uh, based upon design, et cetera. And as we move forward, we'll continue to ensure that we have that ability okay. and, and the, the budgeted dollars to, to and, deliver it. Thank you. And, and the last question I have is, um, so we're, we're facing a deadline, a CDOT implode, imposed deadline in the IGA, correct? Yes. Okay. And if we miss that deadline, what penalties do we face? I, I believe the penalties under the current CDOT agreement are $5,000 a day. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Councilman Cashman. Uh, Councilwoman Ortega, I believe, is next. Thank you. Um, John, I'd like to ask you to come back. I have two questions for you. The first one, um, going back to the CDOT penalties, I thought those were specific in terms of timelines were tied to having the Globeville Landing outfall in place by certain deadlines, that it wasn't as much tied to the um, Park Hill Golf Course acquisition and improvements that are needed there, because we're not going to even begin to get to the improvements until sometime, I'm assuming, in 2018 or so. So correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, I believe that there are more than one deadline that are set forth in that agreement, but it's been a while since I've reviewed it, and so I would have to get back to you. But my understanding is there are dates into 2019 and potentially beyond for certain elements of the program. But acquiring what we need for the um, drainage that needs to be done at that far northeast corner of the Park Hill Golf Course. Um, I guess I'm, I'm struggling with the fact that we had identified somewhere in the ballpark of 20 acres when this overall project was brought to us back, what, two and a half years ago. Um, so I don't understand how it is that we now need 90 acres. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, we should be looking at what we actually need. And I'm, I'm just questioning whether this is, you know, kind of getting back and tying us into the conversation about the acquisition of the golf course from Clayton Land Trust. And this is just a first phase of that. So, you know, I mean, in the interest of transparency, it's why I asked for the budget of the overall project of all four of these to ensure <coughs> that you know, because if we're buying 90 acres versus 20 acres, doesn't that put our budget out of kilter? I mean, so um, I appreciate the fact that Councilman es um, Espinoza has postponed that other one for a week so we could try to get that budget information. But help me understand um, whether or not we actually received the um, information on the title when we did the conservation easement back in the 2000s. Did we not get that? How would that have been have changed since then? Well, status and, of and I want to change oh, on a daily uh, basis. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. I wanted to let you know that uh, Steinberg is right behind you too, as well, because yeah. I know you guys are. A team. Jeff could probably answer yeah, this. Yeah, you better. guys are a team. But but state. certainly there was title. There was a title examination that happened back in the year 2000, and there have been examinations that have happened since then. The city doesn't control the day-to-day -day happenings on that course. It's that's those rights are 
owned by Clayton, and so what might have happened to Tidal between 2000 and today is unknown. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Ortega. Um, and, and, and Jeff, I, I saw you wanting to jump in there. Is there anything that you wanted to say to, to that exchange before I go to Councilman Herndon? If there's further clarification, I'm happy to give it. If the answer is satisfactory, then. Okay. Great. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Herndon. Thank you, Mr. President. I was just going to point out that this, since this is bill for introduction, we're going to have the opportunity to hear from the public and go through questions and comments in two weeks. So I felt as if it was a little redundant to kind of dive into that now. But I was just going to speak on the amendment that Councilman Flynn offered. I walked up here and I see this sheet of paper on my desk without having any understanding behind it or any conversations with Councilman Flynn. So this is not something that I'm comfortable doing right now. I certainly think there are unintended consequences when we try to get involved in the weeds. And so I would hope that my colleagues would vote down the amendment so when we could have the opportunity to hear a little bit more of the reasons behind it on second reading next year. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, next year, that is correct. All right, uh, Councilman Herndon. Councilman Flynn, I'm gonna skip you and get to some of the folks who have not gotten to go yet. Councilman Espinosa, have you gone yet? No, I haven't. Okay, Councilman Espinosa, you're up. So, uh, to me, it seemed pretty self-evident that the, the, perf the intent behind the the amendment was to continue to hit, keep council somewhere, somewhat engaged in the process of uh, land takedown acquisition over in, in the golf course, the Park Hill golf course. Um, and so, I, 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 why would you ever want to uh, remove council um, when council is asking for that? I, I don't understand it because we're, we're that much closer to the constituents that we all serve. Um, I would, I would like you to confirm what I was shown in the briefing, though. Uh, I was presented a, a layout um, that shows a restoration of a fully regulation compliant 18-hole golf course. Is that true? That is true. Okay. So I want it on record that we can, in fact, accommodate the stormwater needs that we're attempting to put in and restore a fully regulation compliant 18 hole golf course. That's correct. Okay. Um, so then um, what is the delay? How many, how, how long does it take for a bill to be fought, I mean, for you guys to file something for council consideration and it uh, uh, approved? When, I'm not sure what type of bill. Are you referring to a land acquisition ordinance bill or? Correct. So the, the process from the decision to acquire a real estate interest No, I'm not talking about the, the, the decision to acquire. Okay. Once you finally decided Councilman, you want to... Councilman, uh, Sky is right here. I mean, Sky, I don't know if you can just real quick. So I don't, I'm not interested in the process. I want to know exactly once you decide to go to council, when we, how long does it take okay. from the time you file to us taking action? Well, a lot of that depends on the action. Sky Stewart, Mayor's office. A lot of that depends on the actions you take. If everything goes on a normal course of action, it'd take five weeks. Five weeks. Well, it, we could do it in as, as fast as two weeks. Is that not correct? Or three? That would assume filing things out of order and taking actions that are not the normal process. Okay. But in, when you say up to five weeks, you're including the entire 30-day uh, or no? No, I'm not. So a seven-week or an eight-week delay. Correct. So, my point is, is that I actually have a ton of confidence in the team that is working on this. Um, both yourselves, Jeff's office, and every and, and public works, that they're looking at this very uh, comprehensively and have a very stout understanding. Especially if the SEMA contract goes through, I think there's also ample time for everyone to proceed with design and recognize any sort of concerns about land use issues. The process that you would have to undertake to acquire land and to do all that, most of that would occur regardless of whether you actually filed something for council or not. That is the same process, legal process that you have to do to acquire land. It doesn't change just because you have to go to council. The only difference that results from this amendment is that it does come to council. And yes, does that create a pocket of uncertainty because council then could in fact uh, deny the request? Yes. But I think that 
I think that you either have a, I, I have the confidence that you're either making that decision and you won't come to that point where council would be in a situation where they wouldn't approve it. And so I don't think there's any real risk um, because we're ultimately all on the same team here uh, regarding stormwater needs and open space needs. So. Councilman, um, the, the risk would come back to this. If there had to be a uh, new filing of a land acquisition ordinance, it would start the entire <coughs> process over again in terms of providing notifications of intent to the operator or the owner of the golf course. Uh, it would entail acquiring a new appraisal and generally speaking, from the point that a land acquisition is put into place until the complete acquisition process is completed is 12 months. So if there were a delay and let's say it was three, five, six months into the process when design was further along and there was an anticipated uh, outcome of what exactly was needed in addition to uh, a determination of how it was to be taken. If we had to go back and file land acquisition ordinance, we'd have to start the entire process over again, and it would add between a six and nine month delay to the construction uh, of this aspect of the project. So Jeff, the thing that I struggle with in your response is uh, this is this sort of concerns that are being uh, um, addressed by such an amendment are in fact in part due to the original um, land acquisition deal that was being struck with, um, with Clayton regarding the entirety of the property. And at that time at Safe House, I asked you specifically if, uh, if you had seen the, uh, if you had either performed, had an appraisal performed or seen the appraisal that Clayton had done. And you confirmed in that meeting that you had not and you did not. And so the city it's sort has of not conducted an appraisal. Right. So it's difficult for me that you would uh, be willing to move forward on that deal and then now here say that it would be it would be prohibitive for us to put in this thing because you'd have to go through that entire process to to acquire land. My expectation is, is that you would be doing that on any land that we're looking to acquire. Um, and so I now I'm even more um, in the uh, of the opinion that we should be exp we should be putting this in here so that we actually go through the full vetting process uh, on whether or not we should take down additional land as it comes up in, in, in this situation. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I just it is a very complicated <coughs> bit of moving parts, um, and so I'm glad that we're actually postponing it for a public hearing uh, till next year. Thanks. Mr. President, can I offer a clarification? Um, you, you got two not, a, not a comment or a question, just to clarify some of the discussion. Okay, very quickly, because we you. have two people. Uh, my amendment includes the provision, provided that the authority is hereby given to acquire lesser portions of the property in fee simple as may be necessary or desirable to provide for the project. So a lot of the answers that are being offered here about having to start all over are not entirely accurate, and I'm afraid that the answers are kind of poisoning the intent of my, okay. of my amendment. Thank well, you. Well, let's make sure we get to all the uh, members of council, and you can go back and clarify that. Councilwoman Black, you're up. Thank you. Um, a lot of my questions were just answered, so thank you for those of you who came up to the microphone. Um, like others have said, I'd really like to have a full discussion about that. I don't feel comfortable with that really delving into any unintended consequences that might be associated with this. So if we can learn more about it in the next few weeks, that would be my preference. All right, thank you. Councilwoman Kanich. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, unfortunately, we are in the weeds, so I'm just gonna stay there for a moment. John, I'm gonna ask you. So I, if I understand the premise of Councilman Flynn's amendment, the premise is he's trying to protect against the city purchasing the entire property exceeding what is needed for the drainage project. I don't read the ordinance as may, allowing for that as written. So I just want to go to section three of the ordinance. Do you have it in front of you? No, but I'm familiar with that. Okay, section. so it says that they, they determine that the interest in the property is required for the following public uses and purposes to construct, locate, and it's all about the drainage project. So I just want to clarify, under that language of the section three of this bill, could the city legally acquire anything beyond what's needed for that Section 3 anyway? 
not under that language of the ordinance, no. Okay, and then I just want to ask Kirsten, is, I don't know if you have the language in front of you, whether you concur, if, or if you haven't had time to review it, I, that's an understandable answer as well, but just do you concur that Section 3 operates as a limitation on what the city can buy? Excuse me. So um, in talking with Mr. McGrath, and I have to defer to him on this, um, that that section was added specifically to address the concern. But um, my understanding from um, also speaking with Councilman Flynn is he just wanted to make it more transparent and clear. Um, so I have to defer it to Mr. McGrath on this. Okay. So yeah, and I, I apologize. I try to use a light touch when I when I'm thinking with my lawyer brain because I, I don't practice law in the same way that you do. But I think this is one of those areas that um, when you're writing policy and you're writing something like you're regulating the public, I think it's okay to sometimes dumb down the language and try to make it even doubly clear for the public to understand what you're doing, even if you're legally covered with the, the language that you have that's drafted by a lawyer. I don't feel that way about contracts, right? So here's the thing, and this is, this is why. So if, if we somehow failed to pass this amendment or there was some problem, the fact that we had done so might make someone interpret this agreement more broadly than it was written, right? So you can actually change the interpretation of other sections of the agreement once you start tinkering with the language. And so I just, I believe that the current language currently limits the city. And, and so I don't think it's a good practice to dumb down language, and I don't mean that as a pejorative, I just meant putting it in plainer words, right? To, to just be clear, I don't mean that as a pejorative term, but. I just, that is, that in my mind is not good, um, you know, contractual uh, writing. That if the ordinance is already limited, my repeating it in different language only creates the potential for more confusion and a potential for a court or someone down the road. And clearly we do have challenges floating around in this environment. So I don't want there to be any confusion. So I'm going to go on the record and say this current bill as written already completely prohibits the city from buying any land that isn't needed for drainage, period. And so I stand by that language. I assert it in the, you know, in the record. The attorneys have now asserted it on the record, which makes the amendment risky in creating confusion. That's, that's my, so I think I share Councilman um, Flynn's good intentions and his intent, but I fear the unintended consequences of um, duplicating, but with different words something that's already covered under the way the, the whole agreement is structured. So I will be voting no on that basis tonight, but understand the good intentions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Kanich. New passes, Flynn, you're up. Okay, thank you. I thought, I thought Councilman New was in. Uh, there are some un unintended consequences, and one of them is, and uh, first of all, I apologize to all my colleagues I wasn't able to reach yet, but when I, I I, saw, I was reading this on Friday night, and we had some weekend email exchanges, and the amendment was actually only drafted at about 3 o'clock or 3.30 this afternoon. And I didn't have a chance to talk to everybody, but I was told that if we were going to act on the amendment, it would be better to act on it tonight, because if we were to adopt an amendment on final, it would cause us to have to do republication and delay it by yet another week, which had its own consequences. That's the reason I was pushing it tonight, and, and for no other reason. I would gladly take it on, uh, on January 2nd, after the public hearing, if it were more clear that we wouldn't have to republish it and take it up again a week later. Uh, the unintended consequence that I'm trying to avoid is that we told the public uh, a couple weeks back, or a couple, maybe a month and a half ago, that we were not gonna buy the Park Hill Golf Course, and in this ordinance, it allows us to buy up to 90 acres as long as it's needed for the drainage project. That was always true. But we were told in committee that we were going to do this by permanent easement and by temporary construction easement and not by purchasing. But we still, nevertheless, in the amendment, leave in the provision that we may acquire by fee simple if that is uh, the necessary uh, way of acquiring the land for the uh, uh, smaller pieces and parcels lesser portions if they are needed to provide for the project. So I believe that it is that the objections that were noted by the folks who say they're going to vote no uh, is addressed right in that last, uh, that last clause of the amendment, Mr. President. So I would ask for support for this in order to keep faith with what the public has been understanding that we were not going to buy the Park Hill Golf Course at this point. We were just going to get easements. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman Flynn. Uh, the amendment is on the floor right now. We're gonna vote on the amendment, or would, would you like us to vote on the amendment? Yeah. Or Okay, great. Uh, council members, uh, given the debate, we are voting the oh. amendment. It has been moved and seconded. Uh, Madam Secretary, roll call. Flynn. Aye. Gilmore. No. Herndon. No. Cashman. Aye. Kimmich. No. Lopez. Aye. New. Aye. Ortega. Aye. Sussman? No. Black? No. Clark? No. Espinosa? Aye. Mr. President? No. Please close the voting and announce the results. People haven't voted. Yep. So we have an, another vote hanging fire. A couple votes hanging fire. Okay. Great. Six ayes, seven nays. Okay. Six ayes, seven nays. The amendment fails. Um, let's pull up 1396. We are. <coughs> This is actually going on to the floor for a um, publication. A publication. So, do we need to, Madam Secretary? Do we, we need to vote on this to move it on? We to can the, vote on the motion that was put on the floor by Cashman and Herndon. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, voting on the um, on the floor here, uh, Madam Secretary, roll call. Flynn. No. Gilmore. Aye. Herndon. Aye. Cashman. No. Kanich. Lopez? No. New? Aye. Uh. Ortega? No. Sussman? Aye. Black? Aye. Clark? Aye. Espinosa? No. Mr. President? Aye. Please close the voting and announce the results. Eight ayes, five nays. All right. Eight ayes, five nays. Um, 1396 moves on.